And I'm back on my bullshit again. Well, my health bullshit-ish, whatever. <sighs> so, some of you might know, I've been in Norway to visit some family, Oslo more specifically. It was a great trip. I've got a bunch of video footage on my phone that I need to edit into a vlog or something, which I guess will go up on the channel at some point. Um, the vlog channel, not the main channel, unfortunately. Can't justify that algorithmically. <laughs> A sentence that I hate more with every passing day. Um, but yeah. Back on the exercise grind. Got home yesterday. And I'm out here again today. No rest for the wicked, no. In fact, I took a lot of rest. <laughs> uh, I took quite a bit of rest. Plus, when I was in... When I was in Oslo, we were... Well, I mean, we took the trams and the trains and the buses and the wonderful public transport that they've got up there, but... We also walked a lot to museums to see my sister, where my sister lives and where she goes to school. She's a design student and damn good at it too. <sighs> so you know, if, if anyone out there needs a a costume designer in Scandinavia, like in a year or two, do get in touch because I know someone who would be good at that. <sighs> But yeah, so, I'll leave the trip vlog for the actual thing. And I guess, I, I think I had something in mind to talk about today, but I, as usual, I've forgotten it. So, instead, health update, I suppose. I'm actually done for the day. I've already finished my... So I might as well sit down instead of walking. So, health update... I called my doctor today, talked a little bit about the blood numbers, and they're looking better, they're improving. So the dietary change in the exercise is doing what dietary change in exercise is supposed to do, and making my health points go up. I have more HP now. So that's good. And so I'm just going to continue doing this, and hopefully we'll, we'll have, another check uh, ch have another check up with him around Christmas, like before Christmas, and see if, if the improvement is continuing. Hopefully it is. And I will be able to avoid having to take any medicine for any of this shit. <sighs> so, what else? Uh, oh yes, um, when I was on this trip to, to, to Oslo, I shared a hotel room with my dad, and he let me know, as, as other people have in fact let me know before, that I snore really quite badly. And not just snore in the sense of making noise, but snore in the sense of I stop breathing occasionally when I sleep, which is not good. That's called sleep apnea. Um, and that's something like other people who have slept adjacent to me in the same room with me have told me that before. And so it wasn't, it wasn't a surprise or anything, but I guess when, when several people independently tell you, hey, you sure do forget to breathe sometimes when you sleep. Uh, it sounds like your airways are getting closed off. That's probably bad. You should probably take that seriously. So, another appointment with my doctor to talk about it, with him about that. And I don't know if I'm going to get like reference to a sleep specialist or whatever, but I do know that there's like m n a number of treatments for that kind of thing. And it might be a, what are they called, CPAP? which is like a sleep mask that pumps a little bit of air into your airways and makes sure that they don't, like... Because what sleep apnea is, is, is the, the soft palate and the flesh in the back of your throat. When you, when you completely relax and you go to sleep, it starts to collapse and your airways get constrained and eventually, like, they can, they can close up completely and that's when you do the... <coughs> like, that's when you get that <coughs> kind of coffee, wake-up, snoring noise. And that's where that comes from. Uh, so, what a CPAP does is it pumps air in there, just in, not a lot. Like not, it doesn't like fill up your lungs with air, but it, it maintains just enough air pressure that it can't collapse, so that your breathing stays open. Now, ostensibly, uh, sleep apnea really kills your sleep quality. Now, I haven't felt exceptionally tired f or anything like that, but. On the other hand, if I've had sleep apnea for years, I might just be considering this my normal. <laughs> and there's actually a, a much better sleep to be to be gained somewhere. But I don't think it's literally like really ruining the quality of my sleep. But I do know that sleep apnea is associated with like 
like really serious risks of heart conditions in the future because because of the constant stop and start of the breathing and your body like um, having a panic response in response to that and waking you up and you go you do the <laughs> thing and like it makes your heart beat irregular and stuff like this. it's lots of bad side effects if you let it go on for too long so I guess that's the next health concern to worry about. Yay! The wonderful thing is I have free universal health care. Well, not free. I pay for it with taxes, like a civilized person in a sensible country would do. Um, so I don't. It's not, I go to the doctor, and if I need a CPAP, it will be provided for me by the state, and I don't have to pay shit for that, probably. Well, in certain circumstances, if, if a doctor doesn't judge that it's necessary for me, they can say, okay, well, if you want one, you're going to have to pay some rent for it and something like that. That that can happen. I doubt it. It's rare. I've never heard of it actually happening. I just know it's something that can happen. Uh, but yeah, free universal health care. It's really great, actually. It's, it's fucking awesome. You should, you should get that in your own countries. You should elect politicians who want you to have that. Because... I would fucking go insane and die if I had to buy private insurance. I have, I have like, allergy and asthma as pre-existing conditions, and I, I don't know what the fuck a private insurer would do to me if I had that. Probably bad shit. I'd probably not be able to get coverage for, like, my asthma medication, which is important because it's kind of... Even, even with government, it's, like, not all medicine is free in Denmark. Like, you, you do have some copay on that one, but, like, the government covers most of that, so I can get my asthma medication for a year for pretty cheap. Like, affordable, cheap. Uh, in some countries with universal health care, even cheaper than that. And I don't, like, if I had to... I, I wouldn't be able to do this fucking thing for a job if I had to pay for my own medicine completely out of pocket. Like, if I had insurance that didn't cover it, I'd be fucked. Like, it would be impossible to do creative work like I do. And I don't know how the fuck my American friends manage it. Like, I've heard student debts of, like... That would take me 30, 40 years to pay off if I had, like, a good job at some regular office-ass place. And I don't get it. I don't understand how Americans can live like this. You, you can have universal health care. It can. You, you can. You put a man on the moon. This is not impossible. You have, like, just take a little... You don't even have to take that much money away from the military to do it. I'm just saying... I've been playing Outer Worlds. Can you tell? I got my <laughs> Outer Worlds is a game that's really fucking gotten me on my anti-capitalist bullshit. Because like, holy, f like, because the parody in Outer Worlds is, yeah, it's an exaggeration and a satire, but it's not that fucking exaggerated when you think about it. Like when you listen to the actual shit that happens in companies, especially in the United States, it's not. It's not that fucking exaggerated. It really isn't that fucking exaggerated. So it's just that fucking... God, become socialists, everyone. Please, for the love of God, save yourselves. A better world is possible. You don't have to settle. Uh, what the fuck else? All right, I'm playing Outer Worlds, which is very good. And that's happening over on the second channel, concurrent with Final Fantasy VI, mostly. And then I'll play Monster Hunter on Saturdays with people. And every once in a while, I'll do a video update thing when I've grinded a bit or I'm running into an interesting quest that kills me a lot. <clears throat> ah, content strategy. So fun. So lovely and interesting. Um, but yeah, that's that's the reality of the job. Is like e Even on the second channel, which is the low-pressure channel where I can just do whatever the fuck I want... I'm still, like, I don't want to upload content that nobody is enjoying watching, right? Like, or that isn't, like, creatively fulfilling to make. Um, and Monster Hunter, I could feel, was I'd, I'd gotten, like, to the end, big air quotes of the game, as such. And I'd, like, seen most of what there is to see and stuff. And so from there, regular gameplay, maybe, maybe not that interesting to, to make, and maybe not that interesting to watch. And if I'm recording some content, some footage for something, and I feel like this isn't really interesting, like this, why, I wouldn't watch this, so why would anyone else? Then it's like, hmm, yeah, no. I, the, the enthusiasm, it just becomes unfun to record it. And so, found something else to replace Monster Hunter. Thank God for Outer Worlds coming out. Uh, I also, I had a halfway plan in my head. If I can fin finish Final Fantasy VI real quick... I might move on to Final Fantasy VII in preparation for the remake coming out. Which is like, what's that, March next year or something like that? Which, I'd love to finish the original first so I could really be reminded of how good and how bad it was. 
by comparison to. But on the other hand, like with Final Fantasy VII, I only really need to finish like the first disc. <laughs> not even the fucking first disc, just the Midgar section, because that's the first game in the Final Fantasy VII compilation, whatever the fuck, like the, the, the quadrology. How many fucking... Like if the first game is a full 60-hour experience and that only covers fucking Midgar... Like, how long is it gonna take just to, like, to get to the... Like, to get to Calm and the Chocobo Ranch and cross the Swamp and the Midgar Zolum and the Mithril Mines and Fort Condor and then to Juno? That's a lot. Like, I don't... I can see how you can... Like, Midgar in Final Fantasy VII has always been its own self-contained thing. Like, this is, it's, it's Final Fantasy VII. Midgar, it's a self-contained bit of the story. It's a very... It's a very condensed, very self-contained chapter, because everything takes place within this one location, and you're dealing with, like, this one set of antagonists and protagonists, and this one arcing storyline of the Avalanche's struggle against Shinra, but then you get out into the wider world, and everything opens up, like, everything becomes massive, and you get, like, this calm, which is this village where you hear the whole fucking story about Cloud's flashback in the past, and, like, what Sephiroth did, and the blah blah blah, and, like, what I'm worried is that they're going to make the entire next game just the fucking flashback, and then plus 30 other related flashbacks to really, like, build out the backstory. Because that that would enable you to kind of reset the characters. Like, you could take Cloud back to level 1 and Tifa back to level 1 and level them up within the flashback to get all their abilities and shit, which would introduce massive continuity errors with, like, what, how the, why the fuck don't they have these abilities when I reach... I, and I don't know how the fuck you're going to do things with the levels and stuff. Like, because if by the end of Final Fantasy VII Remake, the first part, you're level th 50 and you have high-level gear and you do, like, 5,000 damage per hit, like, by the end of whatever the fuck the last game in this series is gonna be, you're doing 250 million damage per hit in your auto-attack combo and, like, summoning multiple gods at the same time to do damage in fucking random mass battles against Mon... Like, I don't know how they're gonna do that. That's what I'm kind of fascinated about with Final Fantasy VII Remake, is, like, are they just gonna go, fuck it, we don't give a shit, we're just gonna reset your entire progress between games so that you start at level one every time? I would respect that. I would respect that a lot, actually. And it would also be a fucking terrible idea. Like, absolutely fucking terrible. And yet, it would be a good idea. It would be a good decision. I don't know. Fuck it. How did we get into this conversation? Wasn't I talking about my health or something? I don't know. I guess I had a lot on my mind since I couldn't talk to you guys for several days while I was in, in Oslo. The light is different here. Like, it, it was different up there. I don't know how. I, I guess maybe because the sun is lower on the horizon when you get further up north, but... I stood on a I stood on a mountain up there, like well, mountains, a small mountain. Some like, yeah. And I looked out over like the, the fjords around Oslo and like the, the little islands and the, and you can just see the the mountains. Ringing the place and the light was different. Like there was something different about the light. It looked kind. It looked clearer somehow, like it was less hazy. You could see father. And, and it was beautiful. God, it was beautiful. None of the footage I captured, like this fucking phone, none of what it can't, it can't show you what it was like up there. I've been in Norway before. I, w I was on a ski trip many years ago with some friends of my dad uh, who, had, who had like a little ski cabin up there and we... The, um, that was a whole thing. And I remember going out at night and watching the stars. Like, on top of this... Like, this, that was genuinely on top of a mountain. And out in the middle of nowhere. And you go out at night on a clear night, and there's no cities around. There's no light pollution. There's no anything. And you go out, and your eyes adjust. And you look up, and you see... Everything. Everything. Like, you... City life kind of fucks us up, I think. If for no other reason than the light pollution means we can't look at the universe properly. We can't really, like, I live in a town with not that much light pollution. I can see the stars sometimes, but up there you could see the fucking galaxy, you know? And the northern lights, holy shit. You've, if you've not experienced northern lights in your life, like, go somewhere where you can't. Or southern lights, like, they've also got them there near the South Pole. Just go somewhere where you can see them just once, just... 
just once. Because there's, there's no feeling like it when you stare up into the starry nights and you feel the void of everything opening up above you. Like you could, like you could fall into the sky forever. Terry Pratchett has a great quote where he says, Religions tend to be invented in deserts because when human beings lie underneath that vast expanse of stars with nothing for hundreds of miles around but dead sand, they find a sudden and pressing need to put something else between them and the universe. And I don't necessarily think that's wrong. I think that may be why we invented gods, is because otherwise you have to look up and see all of that. And there is nothing between you and it. And it is forever. And you aren't. This went in a few directions. Okay, I don't know. I should probably stop recording now. See you tomorrow.